Welcome Geometry students to another Regents Review video. These are the solutions to the August 2016 Geometry Common Core Regents exam. This video is going to feature part 1, which is the multiple choice questions 1 through 12. Once again, of the August 2016 Geometry Common Core Regents exam. Before we begin here, I just want to remind you that if you are here to copy my answers, please refrain from doing so. The Geometry Regents is really not that easy of an exam, and I want all of you to do very well. If you are here to check your answers or you are in need of some form of guidance, you have came to the right place. Or sorry, you have come to the right place, I should say. Please visit my website at www.nysmathregentsprep.com for more math content, and please hit the subscribe button down below. And without further ado, here we go. All right, question number one. In the diagram below, lines L, M, N, and P intersect line R. Which statement is true? Which statement is true? So we got to figure out the angle measurements. If this is 112, then the vertical angle, so all of these, so all these angles uh, can be, uh, well, each angle across from, each is uh, a vertical angle. Sorry, I just had to think about that for a second. So all these are vertical angles. So vertical angles are congruent. So I'm going to fill in all these angle measurements. All right. So these are all vertical angles, and vertical angles are congruent. Now, the angles next to each other are linear pairs, and linear pairs are supplementary. So this is going to be 68 degrees and 68 degrees, because 180 minus 112 is equal to 68 degrees. And this over here, this is going to be 112 and 112. And I purposely pointed that out because here are the exact same angle measurements. So therefore, which statement is true? Line L must be parallel to line P because alternate interior angles are congruent, alternate exterior angles are congruent, corresponding angles are supplementary. Sorry, corresponding angles are congruent, I should say, and same side interior angles are supplementary. So the answer for number one is going to be choice one. Number two, which transformation would not always produce an image that would be congruent to the original figure? Your answer is choice two, a dilation, because a dilation is not a rigid motion, so therefore distance and congruency is not preserved. It changes the size of the image. Moving on to question three. If an equilateral triangle is continuously rotated around one of its medians, which three-dimensional object is generated? So here we have a triangle. Now remember that a median is drawn to its midpoint. So this is being spun around like this. It's being continuously rotated around one of its medians. So which three-dimensional object is generated? Well, that will create a circular base, and that will, in fact, create a cone, which is going to be choice one. Number four, in the diagram below, Angle BDC is equal to 100 degrees, the measure of angle A is 50, and the measure of angle DBC is 30. Which statement is true? So the one thing that I want to do is I want to fill in all of my angle measurements. So BDC is 100, angle A is 50, and DBC is equal to 30 degrees. Okay? Which statement is true? So right now I'm going to fill in all of the angle measurements. So, um... This triangle over here, this little triangle that you see to the right, we already have two of those angle measurements. We could solve for the third by doing, oops, by doing 180 minus 100 minus 30. And that will give us angle C in the corner. So, sorry, that's 30 and that's 100. Okay, so this angle over here, angle C, is actually going to be 50 degrees because 180 minus 100 is... 80 minus 30 is 50 degrees. This angle to the left of the 100 is supplementary to, or, or it's 100 degrees is supplement. So it's 180 minus 100, which is 80 degrees. And this angle up here by itself, that could be 180 minus 80 minus 50, which this angle is also equal to 50. So now I just filled in all my angle measurements. That's great. Now we have to figure out which statement is true. So um, is triangle ABD obtuse? All right, A, B, D. Is this angle, sorry, is this triangle obtuse? We have 50, 50, 80. That's not obtuse. An obtuse triangle means that one of the angles must be greater than 90 degrees. Choice two. Triangle A, B, C is isosceles. Well, is that true? Well, we have a 50 over here, a 50 over here, and up here is 80 degrees. 
these two base angles are congruent to each other, so therefore, choice two is a correct answer. Triangle ABC is isosceles. All right, moving on to question number five. Which point in the graph below is the image of point P after a counterclockwise rotation of 90 degrees about its origin? So we're taking point P, and we are rotating it 90 degrees counterclockwise. So it's going in this direction 90 degrees. I hope that you could eliminate D and C. Those make no sense. Those are rotations of 270. They make no sense. So it has to be either A or B. Now, the correct answer is going to be choice A. And I'll tell you why. There's, there's a main difference between points A and point B. Point A is a rotation of 90 degrees because if you take your graph and you spin it uh, 90 degrees, it will map onto itself. Point B is a reflection over the x-axis. And that was a common misconception that students had. That is a reflection over the x-axis. So therefore, if it's asking for a rotation, it has to be point A, not B. All right, and that's question number five. Number six, in triangle ABC, where the angle C is a right angle, the cosine of A is equal to rad 21 over 5. What is the sine of B? And I hope that your geometry teacher drilled this into your brain by now, that the sine of A is equal to the cosine of B or the sine of B is equal to the cosine of A. So what that means is whatever the cosine of A is equal to, in this case it's rad 21 over 5, your sine of B must also be radical 21 over 5. So the answer for number 6 is going to be choice 1. All right, number 7. Quadrilateral ABCD with diagonals AC and BD is shown in the diagram below. Which information is not enough to prove ABCD is a parallelogram. So remember how to prove a parallelogram. Opposite, if you have two pairs of opposite sides are congruent, two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel, opposite angles that are congruent, diagonals bisect each other, all of those prove a quadrilateral to be a parallelogram. Let's go through each answer choice and figure this one out. Choice one says AB is congruent to CD and AB is parallel to DC. Well, if you have one pair of congruent and parallel sides, that does prove a parallelogram. So that checks out. We're looking for the one that's not enough information. Choice two is showing, okay, AB is congruent to CD and BC is congruent to DA. If you have two pairs of congruent opposite sides, that does prove a parallelogram. So choice two does prove that. All right, let's take a look at choice three. AB is congruent to CD and BC is parallel to AD. Can we prove a parallelogram if one pair of opposite sides is congruent and the other pair of opposite sides is parallel? And no, you can't. And the reason why that is, is in the geometric world of shapes, there is a counterexample. Okay? A counterexample is just a fancy way of saying there's another type of quadrilateral that satisfies this condition. And the counterexample to this is the isosceles trapezoid. The isosceles trapezoid, which I can label ABCD, the isosceles trapezoid has its legs that are congruent and the bases are parallel. So the counterexample is the isosceles trapezoid, so therefore choice three is not enough information to prove that ABCD is a parallelogram. Okay, moving on to number eight. In equilateral, an equilateral triangle has side lengths of 20. To the nearest tenth, what is the height of the equilateral triangle? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw myself an equilateral triangle with side lengths of 20. So 20, 20, 20. Okay? The altitude or the height of the equilateral triangle is perpendicular to its base and it creates a midpoint. So therefore, this little segment is congruent to this little segment. Now, if this whole thing's 20, this has to be 10 and 10. This is a right triangle. Now, look here. This is a right triangle. We could figure out the height of this triangle, the big triangle, by using the Pythagorean theorem. If you're given two sides of a right triangle, you could solve for the third by using a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Let's do it. So we have 10 squared plus b squared is equal to 20 squared. Uh, we have 100 plus b squared is equal to 400. 
subtract the 100 on both sides. We get b squared is equal to 300. And then we take the square root of both sides. The square root of 300, by the way, I use a TI Inspire. It's quite an amazing tool. Um, if you take the square root of 300, that will give you 17.3. So the answer is going to be choice 3 for number 8. All right, number 9. Given triangle AEC, DEF, and FE is perpendicular to CE, which of the following is a correct sequence of similarity transformations that shows triangle AEC is similar to triangle DEF. So a couple of pieces of information that I like from this given up here. It says that FE is perpendicular to CE. So that means that there's a right angle that's formed. That's important because the little triangle over here is mapped onto the bigger triangle by a rotation of 90 degrees followed by a dilation, because it's getting bigger, a dilation by a scale factor of 2 after it's rotated. And it's dilated by a scale factor of 2 because we get 4, and then it maps on to 8, so it's doubled, and then 3 is doubled to 6. So we're looking for the answer, a rotation of 90 degrees about point E in the counterclockwise direction, followed by a dilation with a scale factor of 2. Uh, rotation of 180, no. Counterclockwise rotation of 90 degrees about point E, yes. Followed by a translation, huh? No. A rotation of 180, nope. A counterclockwise rotation of 90 degrees about point E, followed by a dilation with a scale factor of 2 centered at point E. Bingo. That is going to be choice 4 for question number 9. All right, moving on. Number 10. In the diagram of right triangle ABC, CD intersects hypotenuse AB at D. If... AD is 4 and DB is 6. What is the length of AC that makes CD perpendicular to AB? In other words, set up a triangle proportion. So you may have learned this in geometry as the Hills method, or I like to call it Passois. PSSW. Sounds French, Passois. So Hills stands for the hypotenuse over the leg equals the leg over the segment. So if you're doing the Hills method, your hypotenuse is 10. The Hills method is 10 over x equals x over 4. If you're doing it my way that I like, the Passois method, I say part over segment equals segment over whole. So the part is your 4. Your segment that you're looking for is x is equal to x over the whole thing of 10. It's, it's still the same proportion, so it doesn't matter what you do to it. So I'm going to get rid of this down here and just multiply the one up top. So... Um, 10 times 4, you get 40 is equal to x squared. You take the square root of both sides and you break down radical 40. Break it down into radical 4, radical 10. The square root of 4 is 2, radical 10, then that is equal to x. So that is going to be choice 2 for number 10. All right, number 11, almost done. S uh, segment CD is the perpendicular bisector of AB at E. Great. So I'm going to draw AB. And then I am going to draw the segment bisector CE. Okay. Move that up a little bit. Okay. CE. And it's uh, bisecting at E. Which pair of segments does not, does not have to be congruent to each other? So take a look at choice one. It says that, oh, my apologies. That should not be E down there. That should be D. AD and BD. So AD and BD. Are those congruent? And the answer is yes, they are congruent. Because if you have two lines drawn from the same external point, these are congruent. So therefore, choice one is actually correct in the sense that they do have to be congruent. We're looking for the one that's not congruent. So now, Let's try choice two. It says that AC is the same thing as BC. Are those congruent? Well, yes, they are, because again, they're drawn from the same external point, which in fact are congruent. Uh, choice three says the fault. Let me just get rid of these real quick. It says that AE and BE. So AE and BE. Are those congruent? Yes, they are, because E is the midpoint. So this 
is congruent to this. So therefore, choice three is incorrect. We're looking at choice four to be the answer. And the reason why is that there is absolutely no such theorem that states that the length of CE has to be congruent to the length of ED. It's just a it's just a perpendicular bisector. It doesn't necessarily have to be bisecting itself as well. So that's why it is going to be choice four. All right, moving on to the final question of this video, number 12. In triangle CHR, O is on DR and D is on CR such that angle H is congruent to angle RDO. I want you to notice these two triangles. Look at these two triangles. It looks like that the smaller triangle was flipped around and then pushed into the corner that way. So we need to understand that these two triangles are similar by angle angle because angle R is reflexive, but the problem is ODR, triangle ODR, is actually, it's, it's not lining up properly. So what I like to do is I like to say, all right, wait a minute. New York State's not going to fool me here. I am going to draw two separate triangles to clearly show the relationship, okay? And watch how I do this. I'm going to make sure that everything that I have is corresponding. So C, H, R, this is the big triangle. R is going to be down here. D is now going to be down here with an O over here. And these are going to be corresponding. So it says that R, D is 4. Great. R, O is 6. O, H is 4. What's the length of C, D? So if we look at our information again, D, R is Four. They tell us that. OR is six. I'm now labeling my two separate triangles. And what is the length of HR? Because HR is in proportion to DR. Well, what's HR? Well, if you look at our big bigger diagram, six plus four is going to be ten. And the bigger one, CR, because CR is in proportion to OR, this is x plus four, so therefore CR over here is equal to x plus four. So now what's going to happen here is we are going to then set these in proportion to each other. So we get 10 over x plus 4 is equal to 4 over 6. We cross multiply. 60 is equal to 4 times x plus 4. And we continue to distribute and solve. 60 is equal to 4x plus 16. Subtract the 16 on both sides. You get 4x is equal to 44 divide by 4 on both sides, and you get x is equal to 11, which is going to be choice 3. And that is the conclusion of this video. So um, I hope that you did well on this section. Please hit that subscribe button down below and make sure that you visit my website at www.nysmathregionsprep.com for much more math content in geometry and other math subjects, and I'll see you soon.